So lately I've been reading the comment section and a lot of you have been saying I've been milking my age. A lot of you are referring to the fact that every single YouTube video I literally title 18 years old and it seems like I'm doing this for views when in reality I'm scared to get old. Literally like my two best friends on the internet are Haley and Brennan and they literally turned 20 years old. And it just got me thinking like I'm not gonna be a teenager forever. So with that being said, yes, I might be milking my age, but it's just because I won't be this young forever, which kind of got me thinking about the ways we can still stay relevant online. One of it is age, but another could be social media trends. So yeah, today's video is gonna be all about social media trends to make sure you don't dry up like a raisin and stay relevant and youthful. All right, I'm gonna spill you some Gen Z knowledge. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Jade and it's currently 11 p.m. So I'm kind of in a weird mood. I wrote down five things that you need to know in 2020 to stay relevant and pop it on social media. So if you're an influencer, you make content, listen up because I'm literally about to fall asleep. All right. So number five, green pressure. If you've been living underneath a rock, literally everybody and their dog is going more sustainable. Okay. So this might be very, very controversial, but being sustainable is like a trend now. People are throwing it in YouTube titles just for better keywords. Using reuse straws to save the turtles is more of a guilt trip than actually people caring about it. I was literally just hanging out with my friends the other day and they mentioned that they're not buying reusable straws because they want to save the earth, but it's because they feel pressured because if they don't, they'll get bullied for being unsustainable. And this culture of being more green probably is a really good thing for the earth, but at the same time, I don't think it comes from like an ethical reason for everybody. Like for the most part, it's more of used as a trend to be relevant. And what I have to say in 20 2020 is I think more and more brands are going to start leveraging it, not for the good reason. I think there's going to be the right people out there that genuinely care about the earth and want it to be sustained. But for most brands, they're just going to use it as a monetization effort. Literally what this means is any product you're going to see, people are going to try to throw the word eco or sustainable into it. Whether it's apparel, whether it's hoodies that are like eco-friendly, they might be just stuffing it just to make sure it looks more ethical and sustainably produced when in reality it might not. So yeah, just be careful about this perception about eco-friendly products just because brands are going to catch on and like throw it in keywords and the reason why I know this is because I swear I work in social media advertising and literally like e-commerce companies pay money just to make sure that their website is popping up when you search a certain word so brands are going to start placing a lot of money when you type in reusable or sustainable on google search because they want to be the first one to click and because of that that doesn't mean that they're the most credible or sustainable so just be very careful about the sources you read so in recap I think brands and influencers are just going to use eco-friendly as a trend versus actually caring about the earth. All right, number four, the future is private. I want to make a quick disclaimer because if you're pretty and you make really nice Instagram photos about your face, you're probably going to hate me from saying this, but I think more and more people are tired of the Instagram model look. I personally don't scroll on my explore page for this reason anymore because it gives me anxiety and jealousy. I sound like such a hormonal teen, but like who the frick actually goes on Instagram and enjoys the content? Like I feel really stressed out or at least like a little bit angsty and that could just be me but at least from my gen z oh god i hate saying that from being 18 i'm kind of in the stage where i hate the way i look and i'm insecure and instagram is just a perfect place to just validate that i'm not good enough so what i'm trying to say is as more and more people kind of want to look for more authentic content versus comparing themselves i think the future is private so what this means is instagram is going to start focusing on dms and stories versus actual feed if you are trying to get likes I'm sorry. Instagram already removed likes, which means that the platform itself is already going into more private direction. So more DMs, they're going to put more emphasis on like communication versus just like, hey, I'm a model. So a lot of like influencers that are like pretty, I'm sorry, they're probably just going to go down in a shithole because they can't connect and emotionally, you know, converse with their audience. So if you're just a pretty face, it might not be in your favor, but if you're a pretty face with a conversation and you're able to, you know, comment back to your audience or DM them or care about them, you'll be chilling. So I think what you're going to see is more private interaction is the priority. All right, guys. So before I go to number three, I want to mention that you better stay to the last one because I'm going to spill some tea. A lot of people don't believe in my predictions and I get it. Who is this 18 year old talking shit about digital marketing? But I have to say something creepy happened. Last September, I made a video about when Instagram was going to crash and literally the next month it did. So if you guys don't remember that, I'll link it below. I could be onto something. So just don't doubt me, okay? <laughs> 
So number three, brands taking character. In 2020, you're probably not gonna talk to a human. You're gonna talk to a robot. Anything customer service oriented is gonna be done through chatbots. And I know this just because I was working with another e-commerce company literally yesterday and they were trying to automate their customer service. So they're not gonna have a John and Sally. They're gonna have Mr. AI respond to our clients because it's faster and cheaper on the brand. And what you're gonna see is more and more jobs are gonna get automated and a lot of it has to do with chatbots. So customer service is kind of screwed. Honestly, brands are gonna start to get a persona using chatbots and artificial intelligence. So what this means is more brands are gonna use artificial intelligence and chatbots to replace customer service. And the funny thing is you probably interacted with one more. So if you've ever been shopping and there's like a pop-up that says like a live chat to talk to customer service, that is a robot. I'm not joking. It's very crazy how much artificial intelligence can resemble a human, but that is not a human and you'll be surprised more often than not you're talking to a robot. And I work in chatbots. I work in advertising and this is just for two main reasons. It's going to save labor and two, it makes it faster for the consumer. So although you might be scared in your pants, it's actually going to help you get your answers faster. And in 2020, most of customer service will be automated. All right. So if you're someone who's maybe sitting in your chair, feeling a little scared that everything is getting automated, make sure you give this video a like. So I know that you find this video at least interesting. I don't like talking about this just because it's kind of scary, but I kind of dig it. So let me know if you guys enjoy this video. All right. Number two, TikTok is going to receive pressure. So if you guys don't know, TikTok is a social media app with almost more followers and interaction than Instagram and YouTube. It's crazy. I'm addicted to it. I make content on there way too much, but here's the issue. You can't make money on TikTok. The only way you can technically make money is through live streams, but TikTok is placing ads and none of the creators are getting a percentage of this. And I was recently talking to a creator not called Sebastian Bales. Sebastian Bales. Sebastian. And we met at like an LA event and he was basically saying that the top people on TikTok are frustrated with this idea that they're not able to make money like they are on YouTube with AdSense. And because of this, I think more and more of the top creators are going to get less motivated to make content. TikTok can't pay their creators just because of copyright music. And creators are going to get really frustrated that they can't make money with the ads getting placed right by their video. So people are probably going to spread out to YouTube or Instagram or at least another way to make money other than TikTok just because it's less reliable and they take so much percentage out of their live streams. So I really think in 2020, there's going to be pressure from TikTok to reevaluate their business business model, either to take care of their creators, something's going to happen. I think more and more people are getting really frustrated. All right, which leads me to number uno. Okay, so the number one trend I think that's going to happen on TikTok is it's a little bit confusing. I've seen a lot of people get backlash and a lot of hate has been around this subject. And honestly, it sucks because I'm kind of a part of this mess. The number one trend that's going to happen in 2020 is creators going direct to their fans. What does this mean? So I don't know if you've seen, but Jake Paul's a YouTuber with 10 million subscribers and he recently put out his phone number and this phone number is a way for him to take his audience to text message and basically he can text his audience. The reason why I believe Jake is doing this is because he's smart. If you guys haven't seen the new recent YouTube COPA law basically says that YouTube is turning off comments and it's extremely scary to think that a platform with so much power can like make you invisible in one single click. So I believe more and more creators are going to start valuing owning their data and owning you know traffic that's direct because you never know if you YouTube disappears, you're gone as well. So for a lot of people that are alarmed by this, Jake Paul used a company called Community, I believe, to do the text message platform. But I realized that I wanted to create my own that was a lot more intimate and provided actual engagement versus just like sending out notifications. So that's why I started my company, Personal Brand Journey. And we recently rolled out this feature with Haley Pham. She's a YouTuber here and a few other people because I genuinely believe that the future of social media is actually caring about your audience. Like your fans or people scrolling will not care if you don't care. And the way you can show that is through conversations and messaging them one-on-one. -on -one. Like I said, the future is direct. So I think text message is one of the most intimate places to connect with people, right? Talking about them, asking questions and learning about your audience. So yeah, I believe that more and more creators are gonna get scared that YouTube's gonna delete their traffic and turn off all their comments and start migrating to a text message platform. And by the way, for anyone who's gotten their comments turned off because of the YouTube child policy, it's really frustrating and it's not fair. And I don't know what's going to happen in the future. But what I do know is if you're able to back up your contacts or you're able to have a second platform, you're going to be safe. So if you're a creator, just take advantage of this time to like recoil. And I just believe YouTube can't really solve this issue on its own. They're taking it to the government in the US to fix this shit. It's really frustrating and we'll have to see what happens. I think 2020 is going to be a pivotal moment for so many of these tech companies. A lot needs to change with legal reasons and the way that people are navigating online. I believe that consumers don't want to just scroll and look at content. They want to converse and interact and that engagement 
can be done through conversations. I would love to know your favorite trend out of this list. Maybe something you're scared or most surprised by. Comment below your thoughts and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you guys want to be the next comment winner, comment below. I love you guys so, so much. If you guys want to learn any more tips or tricks about the social media future from my Gen Z teenager, God, that's crunchy. You guys can text me and I send weekly messages about trends and tips. So yeah, go check it out and I'll see you guys very soon. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.